The second editing tip is to use auto reframe. Well, okay, so what is auto reframe and when do you use it? Well, it's an effect that you put on your clips if they don't match the resolution and framing of your current timeline sequence. So for example, this iPhone mini 12 one here that was filmed in 1080 and this sequence is 4K. It might be this horizontal clip right here. So it was filmed in 16 by nine instead of nine by 16 and or maybe a clip like this one where the subject is moving within the frame. That's a perfect one to use auto reframe on. Okay, so in a normal situation, you have your clip like this, for example, that's too small and you'd probably go into your effect controls. If you don't see effect controls, click away from your clip and then click back on it and it'll appear here. If it doesn't, then try going up here to window and then down to effect controls and that'll help you find it. And you're usually gonna mess with position, scale and rotation. So for scale, if you click on this blue number thing here and you slide left, it's gonna shrink any clip. And if you go to the right, it's gonna expand it. So that's the manual way. You just expand it and put it to the size that you want. For position, this is where you'd move it left or right for this one. And then this side is up or down. So if I slide this left, it goes up and slide it right, it goes down. So you can manually just mess around and frame everything the way that you want, no problem. All right, now let's add auto reframe onto these clips so we can see what it does. To find auto reframe, you go over to effects over here. If you don't see effects, go to window and down to effects right there. Then we'll just click in here and type in auto re and you'll find it in this transform folder right here, auto reframe. And then all we have to do is click on it and drag it to our clip. But I want you to pay attention to what happens over here to this. And depending on the clip and how hard it is to process, you might see this blue like processing bar down here as well. So I'm gonna grab auto reframe, drag it onto my iPhone clip and you can see, so there's nothing there. It's a small enough clip that it just quickly auto reframed it to match this frame. Notice that all of our motion controls are disabled when auto frame is applied. But if we scroll down here, we can see the auto reframe effect. And there's some other options that we can mess with down here. I'm not going to deal with anything with adjust position here because that's more what you'd want to do if you want to animate it. And I'm going to save animation for the next tip. But down here, there's some other things that we can do, i.e. reframe the scale if it didn't scale exactly how you wanted it or the rotation down here. But for some reason on this iPhone clip, I can't reframe the offset to go left and right or up and down. So if that happens to you, you can just go back in here and type in transform and in this distort folder, grab transform, drag that onto your clip and then you'll see it appear underneath where we had auto reframe in your effects, but we want it to be above. So click on transform and drag it so the blue line goes above auto reframe and then use position here if you still need to adjust your position and it didn't work within auto reframe. Okay, next let's try it on this horizontal clip right here. So I'm gonna get rid of that and type in auto reframe again, grab it. And again, I want you to pay attention over here to what it does. I'm gonna grab it, drag it on and you're gonna see it reframes, but see this blue bar? It's gonna bump it over here. Oh, see? So it reframed it to match the scale first and then it analyzed the movement within the video to reposition the video. But for this one, it now allows me to offset the reframing left and right and up and down. I can still scale and I can rotate if I want. Okay, so this next one, this is where really auto frame comes in. So you can see once I put this clip in, it's another horizontal clip but I, maybe I'll just trim this down. I move within this all the way across, right? So it's not moving, like I'm moving, but the frame isn't moving. Now watch what happens when we put auto reframe on. Boom, it rescales it, and then now it's processing it. And now watch, as we watch through here, it's gonna stay tracking with me. So it reframes and positions to match the movement of the subject in the shot. The auto reframe effect will also work on 4K clips that are too big for a 1080 timeline. So if I drag that in, you can see it'll scale that one up. And just like any other effect, if you select multiple clips and then drag it onto one, it'll apply them to all at the same time. 
And then to finish up with auto reframe, let's look at this rotated clip that it's not gonna work on. So click on it, drag it on. You're gonna see that it scaled it up. It's processing still. It's gonna move it over, but that is obviously not what we wanted. So there's no point then in doing that and then going down here and messing with any of these offset, you know, things down here with scale, rotation, whatever. In this case, and for many other clips, it might just be better to deal with our motion settings manually instead of applying auto reframe. Now, even though auto reframe did a good job of analyzing and tracking this clip, I wanna use it to show you some of the other options that we can mess with within auto reframe. So the first one here is motion tracking. Right now it's set on default. If you have slower moving stuff, you can change it to slower motion, or if you have really fast moving action or sports, you can move it to fast motion, it might track better. Mine's kind of in the middle, so I'm gonna leave it on default. For adjust position, this is something you can animate. So if, for example, that like partway through, I didn't want it to actually stay in the middle, I can click this toggle animation that sets a keyframe. Notice how it jumps back to its original position, not the auto reframe position. So now I can move this and place it where I want. So maybe I want it way off to the right like this. So notice what happens. It'll start auto reframed here. And then as it's moving towards this keyframe, it'll drift to the right. And then it'll drift back towards the auto reframe position if there's no other keyframes. Down here though, if you click this overwrite generated path, that gives us a little bit more control. So if I click on that, you can now see all of the keyframes that auto reframe generated in the first place. So we could actually use those if we wanted by clicking on these little arrows here to go keyframe to keyframe so that if we wanted to, we could readjust little bits at a time. So I could move this one to here, for example, so that when it's going from this keyframe to the next, it'll position there, but then it will bounce back. So it's kind of a tough thing. If you don't know what you're doing with keyframes, I would definitely not overwrite generated path because there's just too much work to get it back into place. And just so you know, you can apply auto reframe to an entire sequence as well. So let's say you've edited a whole video in horizontal or landscape, but you also want a version that is vertical or maybe a one by one, then you can use auto reframe to do that. So down here, I have a very simple horizontal sequence that I made just as an example. It has my intro in it and then a bunch of other clips that you've seen in this video. So that side to side clip and a little X animation the iPhone clip that's super zoomed in, the horizontal 4K clip that fits nicely because that's its sequence. I have the 4K vertical that's zoomed way in, that sideways clip with a little oops animation, and then my outro with the subscribe button stuff on it. So now if I wanna convert this into a vertical sequence by using auto reframe, all I have to do is make sure I'm selected on my sequence right here, then go up to sequence, and then down to auto reframe sequence. This little menu is gonna come up. Your sequence name is right here. I'm just gonna leave it as landscape example, nine by 16. For my target aspect ratio, I'm gonna keep it as vertical nine by 16, but if you drop this down, you can do square one to one or even a custom one yourself. I'm gonna put it back to vertical. For motion tracking, if you have just like talking head stuff or not many things that are moving, maybe pick slower motion. If you have fast action sports and lots of things moving around, maybe pick faster motion, but I have a little bit of both, so I'm gonna just leave it on default. Down here, I'm gonna select don't nest clips because I don't have a lot of animations and adjustments, and I feel better just adjusting them afterwards anyway. If you did have a lot of keyframing and motion adjustments, then maybe pick nest clips. That one doesn't ever really work for me very well though. Okay, so I'm gonna click create. You're gonna see that over here in your project files an auto reframed sequences folder is gonna be made with that sequence in it. If you made more sequences, like let's say a one by one version, it would also appear in there. And then it shows up right here as the vertical sequence right there. And just like when we added the auto reframe effect to our clips, Premiere Pro is gonna analyze your footage. It's gonna rescale it, reposition it, and make it fit this aspect ratio. Now. To see how good Premiere Pro did, let's head back over to the vertical workspace and I'm just gonna push play so we can see what happened. So as you can see, my intro there was kind of messed up. It's tracking me, but that X is just kind of floating around still. The iPhone shot was framed well. 
the horizontal clip was cropped in nicely. The vertical 4K clip was obviously fit in nice. That flipped <laughs> rotated 90 clip was bad, but the oops animation was good. And then my stuff at the end didn't turn out very good either. Okay, so let's start with what Premiere did well. So obviously the clips that were oriented properly, whether they were vertical or horizontal, all were reframed very well, just like they were when we applied the auto reframe effect. However, once again, the only clip that didn't get framed properly was this rotated 90 clip. And to fix that one, I would suggest just going down to auto reframe, clicking on it, getting rid of it, then going back up to rotation, typing in negative 90, and then scaling it back into place. Okay, so that fixes all of our regular clips. Now let's move on to our graphics. But when it comes to graphics, auto reframe is awful. It never seems to work. So let me show you four different ways that you can fix your graphics once auto reframe has messed with them. So the first type is one where auto reframe was not applied to it. So this oops one, we can see by the fact that I can see my motion parameters here, that auto reframe was not applied to it. So if that's the case, you can just go back into your settings and adjust them. So in my case, this oops one is actually just twice the size of this one because this is a 4K sequence and this one was 1080. So all I have to do is go back into scale here, click in here and go 50% and it'd be the same size as it was before. So you can go in and mess with your parameters here. And the reason why I can do that is because I use transform on this one. So I can mess with this motion and scale stuff separately than the animated part down here. Now, if I go over to this one, I can't exactly do the same. It's the same thing. Auto reframe was not applied and I have my transformation down here. However, if I just scale this one, then it's gonna be smaller and it's only gonna operate within the middle here. So if I want the X to go up higher and lower, I'd have to go in and mess with the keyframes individually. So if I can go use these arrows, I can go back to these keyframes and just individually mess with the X to put it wherever I want. And then now if I watch that, the X will float around the screen. It's different than it was before, but at least it stays on the screen. The third type are graphics that are housed within one clip here, like this one, my subscribe button, and my outro that I nested. I'll talk about nesting in a second, but they're housed within one clip and auto reframe just butchered it. So right here, it's bouncing all around. If that's the case, treat it similar to the rotated 90 clip. Just click on it, go down, eliminate auto reframe, and then either apply the transform effect or just go back up here and scale it however you want and position it however you want. Same thing for this nested clip. So a nested clip, if I double click on it, is its own sequence that holds a couple graphics, but they are now treated as one here. So the same thing, just go down, get rid of auto reframe, again, add transform, or just scale it and position it wherever you want right in here. The last type are ones where auto reframe was not applied and they're in separate pieces. So I have does Premiere Pro as one piece here and then this guy as another piece. So if you see here, I edited the motion of these ones right in my vector motion. I didn't apply transform. So now it's gonna be very difficult for me to adjust this. I could go into my anchor point, you know, move, this around and then go down here to my textile, double click in there, scale it up. Like I can do a whole bunch of things in there, but that is just way too time consuming. So in this case, I would delete those out. Boom, those are gone. And then go back to your original timeline, your original sequence, and I would nest them. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna highlight these two, right click, and then go up to nest. I'm just gonna call this title text, click okay. You're gonna see it turn into that nest. Then I'm gonna click on it, right click, copy it, go to my new sequence, lock these layers down here so I don't paste over it, and then just paste it in there. 
So now we can treat it as one of those other ones at the end, like this one, where I can just click on it and position it, scale it where I want, and we're good to go. Now, just I have this other piece in the background there that I have to just scale down, but then we would be good to go. If you want to learn how to do some other creative layouts like split screens, check out the videos I have linked down below.